How you doing? Today we're continuing on with the puppy place where every puppy finds a home. This here is about Scout. We are continuing with chapter 9. <clears throat> Buddy, Lizzie called. Buddy, come, Charles shouted. Lizzie tried to do that fingers in the mouth whistle, but as usual it didn't work. So she clapped her hands instead. Buddy, she yelled again. Buddy did not appear. We'll better start looking for him, said Lizzie. What if there's a hole in the fence or something? She started off towards the place where she had seen Buddy last, near the boulders. Charles and Scout followed her. Buddy wasn't near the boulders, and Buddy wasn't behind a tree either. Buddy wasn't trapped in some bushes. Buddy was nowhere to be found. Lizzie turned to Charles. Maybe you should go get Kathy, she said. I'll keep looking. Charles nodded, looking serious. We'll find him, right? He asked. Lizzie gave her brother a hug. She knew how worried he was. Buddy was the puppy he had wanted for so many years. They both loved him so much. He'll be fine, she said. I'm sure he's just found something that seems more interesting than us right now. He's probably sniffing so loudly that he can't even hear us calling. Charles nodded again, and then he took off towards the gate to get Kathy. Lizzie looked around. How could Buddy have disappeared so quickly? It had only been a few minutes since she had last seen him. She decided to walk around the length of the whole fence, calling for him along the way. Come on, Scout, she said. Let's find Bunny. Scout's ears picked up when she heard what, that word. She knew what find meant. This game was the most fun ever. But why didn't Lizzie sound happy the way she usually did when they played? Scout glanced up at Lizzie with a worried look. Then she put her nose in the air and started sniffing to find her friend Buddy. Buddy, Buddy, Lizzie called as she walked along the fence. She didn't see any holes or gaps in the little puppy could have climbed through. She, as she walked, she also looked towards the center of the playpen. She was hoping to get a quick flick of a tail or a flash of white heart on Buddy's chest, but there was no sign of Buddy. Scout trotted along in front of Lizzie, sniffing at everything. She was wagging her tail, and her ears were close to get pointed as Lizzie had ever seen them. You're a good girl, Scout, said Lizzie. I know you'll help find Buddy. There was that word again. Sn Scout sniffed even harder. Suddenly, Lizzie gasped. As she turned around a corner, she saw a tall tree beside a stream had fallen over, crushing the fence beneath it. Scout ran over to the place where the fence had been broken, sniffing like mad. Oh, no, Lizzie said. Instantly, she knew that Buddy must have escaped from the playpen. Now he could be anywhere. They had to find him quickly before he could get into trouble. Lizzie looked around behind her, hoping to see Kathy and the others arriving, but there was nobody in sight. She knew what she had to do. Come here, Scout, she said. She clapped a leash under Scout's collar so Scout couldn't run away too. Then she gave the command. Let's go. Find him. Find Buddy. Scout and Lizzie scrambled over the fallen tree and the broken fence. They splashed through a little stream which continued on the other side of the fence. Look, Lizzie said. There were paw prints in the mud. Buddy must have gone this way. Scout seemed to understand. She leaned into the leash, pulling Lizzie along the path of the stream. They followed the footprints a long way as the stream wound its way this and that. Soon, Lizzie began to hear sounds of cars. Her heart started thumping. There must be a road nearby. Buddy, she called. Her mouth was so dry she could hardly make the sound. She licked her lips. Buddy, she called again. Then suddenly, Scout began to pull even harder on the leash. She dragged Lizzie all the way to the edge of the road where the cars were whizzing by. Oh, no, Lizzie said. If Buddy had tried to cross that road, she couldn't even think about what might have happened. But at the last minute, Scout did not climb up to the road. Instead, she headed straight for a big pipe that went under the road. She poked her head inside and barked, and then Buddy barked back. To Casey from Lizzie, subject, Scout's a hero. Dear Casey, you'd be so proud of little Scout. Today she found Buddy, who was stuck in a culvert, one of those pipes that water goes through, and then she rescued him since the pipe was too small for any people to crawl into. We were so happy to see him. Buddy was happy, too. He licked everybody in sight, and then he licked us all again. Maybe he'll stay out of trouble for a little while this time. I hope you're doing well in Mexico. Our class can't wait to see you again. When will you be back? Love, Lizzie. And then the dog, Casey, wrote back to Lizzie from Casey. Coming home. Dear Lizzie, wow, that scout is something else. Sounds like all your training has really paid off. Thanks for the news about her and Buddy's adventure. I'll be seeing all of you in person sooner than I thought. We had a little adventure of my own down here in Mexico, and Meg is bringing me home early. We'll tell you all about it when we get there. Loves and arfs, Casey. And that's the end of Chapter 9. Hey, keep listening to your parents. Do your homework. 
and keep on reading. You know, it won't hurt you. We miss you here. See you soon. Bye-bye.